Here we go. All right, here we are for another episode of I've Known You Too Long. My guest today is Jake Snyder. Jake Snyder is probably best known for singing and playing guitar in the band Minus the Bear, but he also used to be in a band with me years ago called Screwjack. And uh, also, he was in Sharks Keep Moving and uh, in State Rock 522. He's done a lot of a lot of uh, bands in the Northwest over the years, and I'm uh, I'm happy to have him here with me. Thank Hello, you, Jake. Thank you for having me, David. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here on your podcast. <laughs> this is uh, my first time. Um, Speaking podcastily with you. Podcastily? Yeah. <laughs> I've never really heard that voice before. Mm hmm. That's a, that's a real deep adult version of Jake. And I haven't seen you very much for the past decade, really. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. We've, uh, we've gone different, we've gone down different paths somewhat. Eh. A little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. I, I think I probably went down more of a different path than you did because you kind of stayed in the same vein you were in. Yeah. But hey, here's how we start this podcast. Jake, I've known you too long. Mm-hmm. That's probably very true. <laughs> so um the the common one that I keep uh that I keep coming back to with people because my old brain is failing me is I have known you so long that I can't exactly remember where we met. I think the first time I remember meeting you was at Fallout Records and I I bought the Universal Choking Sign Comp and you were there. And I was like, hey. Nope. <laughs> well, that's when I remember. That's the first time I remember. Well, no, I think you. that there's, if the first time you remember me was in Fallout, then I think that part's right. But the universal choking sign part is not right at all because we'd known each other for a long time when oh, I put yeah, that record together. You're probably right. Well, Cindy, I wonder what other crappy Cindy hardcore Baker comp I was plays buying. bass on the Greg Bennett spoken word track that starts that compilation. She was mm -hmm. already, I think, not in state route at that point. Yeah, so you're, I skipped like five years <laughs> it's, already. It's just, just a couple. But no, that's cool because you at least remember that. It's the Fallout thing. I was buying something that was some garbage hardcore thing. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't something that you did maybe, but it was, it was something. Some garbage hardcore thing? Yeah. <laughs> and you don't remember what it was? No. But it was something like that would have been on my record label. Yeah, something that your record label would have definitely put out. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I don't, I don't think you were putting on a voice so much at the beginning of this at all. I think I just haven't haven't heard your voice enough lately. This is just, this is what you sound like now. Yeah, it's years and years of smoking okay. things. <laughs> okay, so let me give you a lowdown on, on what we do. So we figure out uh, where we first met, mm -hmm. as close as we can. And usually we can narrow it down pretty well. And then I like to go back from there and talk about where you came from. Like, how did you get to a place where we would have met and become friends? And we can go all the way back to your very little childhood. And then, once we catch up to the point where we met, then we go forward and we talk about things that have happened since. Okay. And that's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. All right, so you think Fallout Records? Yeah. I think it's a pillow show. A pillow show. That's possible. At the old, uh, at the old firehouse type here's the place? Thing. Or would it be Here, the here's the thing. No, not the old firehouse. I and I'm, I've really been racking my brain in preparation of this episode to figure out the first time I can remember seeing you and recognize you and knowing who you were. Mm -hmm. So Pillow was a band that you were in prior to Stay Out Five Twenty Two. Mm -hmm. um, when did you start that band? I'm sure high school. I think it have to be. I think it was you were probably in high school. Yeah, it would have to be in high school. Um, yeah, this. I mean, it was just kind of like the garage band. You know, pop punk band I was in at the time. And had you been... had you well, well, we'll get to how you you started that up. But do you remember a show on the East Side that was not at the old firehouse, but was still kind of a big show that Pillow would have played? It was it was the uh, Ground Zero opening. We did play that, but that would have been after I knew you actually. I, I think, think so. And um, you know, honestly, I feel like it was it was in Redmond or Bellevue. I I, I not Ground Zero because I'm I'm well aware of Ground Zero. The weird thing is, I have this um, I don't remember what it was like inside, but I just in my head I remember being outside of this place 
that isn't the old firehouse. And I remember thinking... Oh, the annex or something like that? Oh, there was this really that's... weird place that was dark. There you very go. Very dark. Okay. Okay, so Also that, in Redmond. Yeah. That sparked stuff off. So it mm-hmm. that's, that might have been what it was. It wasn't Magic Mike's. It was the annex. No, Magic Mike's also was... That's not it, though. Something else, yeah. That's not it. So I think I met you and Cindy Baker at about the same time. Mm-hmm. And w- did Cindy play in Pillow? No. No. She was in, she was in, played State bass in State Route, Route 522. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I feel like outside of this place where you guys played, you and Cindy kind of just both appear on the scene. And that's where that, I feel like that's when someone would have said, Hey, this is Jake. Or you would have said, Hey, Dave, you know, mm-hmm. um, I'm Jake. Cause there's nothing before that, but it, we still could have run into each other in Fallout like the prior week or something. Right. And maybe even you would have said, okay, my band's playing at this thing. Mm-hmm. All right. But, Who knows? But you you have no memory of me prior to that time. No. And almost immediately after that, I believe Pillow was over. Yeah, that didn't take long. Yeah, it was <laughs> over pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, after the high school. When did you graduate from high school? 94. 94. So I'm thinking summer 94 and summer, this, this is a, a time that keeps coming up in this podcast and there's only been a few episodes of it, but it's going to keep happening. So much happened in the summer of 94 mm-hmm. and so many people basically just came on board and became part of the, the situation. So that makes sense. You graduate that summer is a big summer, a lot going on at the old firehouse, a lot going on on the East side shows all, and you were probably coming into Seattle for stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we'll just call it summer 94. Mm-hmm. So. Where do you come from? Um, that's an interesting question, Dave. Uh, I, <laughs> I, the East Side, I was like uh, raised in Woodenville for the most part. Did a little stint in Bellevue, raised in Woodenville. Um, you were born out there? Born at, uh, yeah, I was born at Northwest Hospital, uh, kind of close to here, closer to here, but like uh, where we're actually recording this podcast. In, sh- in Shoreline, just in outside Washington. of Seattle. Yeah. So, but yeah, I lived in Bellevue and then Woodenville, um, you know, suburban life. And okay. Woodenville was very nearly rural at the time. Yeah. I mean, and it's gotten bigger and bigger mm-hmm. every year. So even when I was driving out to see you back then, you know, drive out to your parents' house, there was, you know, there was wooded areas. Yeah. So, so you're just near Northwest the whole time. Mm-hmm. What were you like as a little kid? I was like a little, I play with the toys, you know, like the Transformers and the G.I. Joes. Those were, um, those were the ones? The yeah. Trans- and I did, uh, poorly in sports. Um, I, that's actually you know, a little surprising to me. I would have thought that you were going to say that there was some, there was some sport you were, you, you played soccer or something. No, I have really bad vision always did apparently. So that you weren't good at catching a ball. Couldn't catch nothing. Couldn't catch a ball. Couldn't kick it. Had no, it also led to bad depth perception too. So, oh, bad vision, bad depth perception. So it was a. Uh, Could you run? Sure, I can run pretty fast. No, were you back then? Back then, yeah, I was even probably faster back then than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so you did all right. You were you were the head of the pack when you were a kid. You were a runner. I wouldn't say that that's, I wouldn't go there. I don't know where you jumped to that conclusion, head of the pack. <laughs> well, I, just I was like second for, fastest. Look, listen, okay, all well, right. that's head of, that's like right behind the head of the pack. I've always felt that. Listen, yeah. I came in last, usually, Aww. or sometimes, if I was lucky, I got ahead of the last couple. For me, it was always, can I just beat one other kid? Right. <clears throat> and that's what I was like as a little kid. I was very small. So when I hear, oh, yeah, if, if you can say about yourself as when you were a kid, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, I could run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then you're head of the pack from my point of view. All right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could swim, oh, run. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, you know, into the, into skateboarding. Well, when did you get into skateboarding? That, that wasn't, uh, like real skateboarding. When did you start that? 12 years old. 12? Mm-hmm, just maybe, going into junior high? Maybe, yeah, maybe just about junior high, I would think. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about, tell me about you in grade school. How did you get along with other kids? I, I had my little crew. I was never like in grade school. That's an interesting one because, um, it's literally meaningless. The whole the whole time you know i don't believe it is no it's like it's it's i think that we mean the same thing (laughs) (laughs) that that could very well be um but yeah what was i like and i don't know i was like any kid probably i don't remember much about being were you a happy kid did you did you did you get along with other kids did you fight 
Never fought. Um, got along with kids pretty much. I was more on on the uh, periphery of things rather than like being the uh, alpha kind of, you know, grade schooler. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I played with toys and stuff. Well, I think all grade school kids comic toys books. and stuff. You got you were into comic books and grade see, school. but there's a distinct difference between being in, in elementary school and liking the comic books and the and the Star Wars and the. I didn't mention Star Wars earlier. Sorry about that. Well, you but should because I I, 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 I like Star Wars. I like Star Wars quite a bit. Played a played a big role in your life, didn't it? Yeah. Do and you have any Star Wars tattoos? Just one. Okay. And uh, what was I saying about being a child? Like you're. The Star Wars part. Now I'm just thinking about my tattoo. <laughs> you were saying that you were saying, I'm sorry, I'm going to do that a lot. So. I know, I'm so sketchy. <laughs> um, you were saying that you were into comic books and stuff. and then Well, yeah, you- the, the difference. Okay, yeah. Here's the thing. This is where the sports comes into play. Because, like, you can run fast, but nobody gives a shit if you don't hit a ball or catch a ball. You know? So, like, oh, cool. You're on the track team. <laughs> but you can only run one event. And it's only 50 yards. And if you run a lot further than that, you're going to die. Like, you just fall over and die. And that's kind of how athletic I was, aside from the skateboarding. But, yeah, there's, like, the everybody likes the comic books. Everybody likes the the toys. But if you don't also like the baseball and have, like, some interest in, like, the process of sporting, you know, yes. team sporting, then, you know, you, you're, you miss out on a whole world of engagement with your other little elementary school friends yes. i think that continues on to adult life as well well it does and then you, a lot of times there's traumatic things that happen in grade school that mm-hmm. will you know they, i mean that's how you know you don't do sports well is something something traumatic, traumatic happens <laughs> or at least somewhat <laughs> embarrassing you know and let's not throw the word traumatic around like it like it's meaningless <laughs> let's not throw it around like yeah, it's meaningless not. well i mean bill baker's episode you know, mm. that we went to grade school together and I, I saw so much of the stuff that he did that was fantastic and terrible. Like, mm. and I saw him get beaten up. Like I've seen Bill Baker get beaten up more than I've seen most things multiple times. Mm. So, you know, that was, that was clearly traumatic for him and, and had an effect. That's what life. I mean. See, for me, I think that's more traumatic because I, I never really got beat up. No fights. So you didn't no. have anything like that. Once, once a kid punched me in the face. Yeah. You yeah. just fall down? No, I just split my lip open and I ran home. Oh, you could run home from your grade school. No, it wasn't at school. It was, uh, it was sorry. Just grade school era. Era. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Do you ever get in any kind of trouble with teachers or get kicked out of school or no. suspended or anything? You no. were a good kid. You mm-hmm. followed the rules. Yep. All right. And you you were a kind of kid who wanted to follow the rules. I didn't think of it in those terms really. Well, I'm, I, probably not at the just time. Like that's how you play the game. But you look back on yeah. it. Like, I, I was I, I was pretty much a kid that wanted to follow most of the rules. Yeah. I was just kind of, you know, it, it seemed like that just made everything easier. Yeah. I thought a lot of the rules were really, really dumb. Like, make your bed. Make, clean your room. Just going to get messy again. Well, see, we had, we had rules like you can't go in the woods at recess. Because there were woods. There was like a wooded area. And, yeah. of course, that meant we just wanted to go play in the woods the whole time. Why at, didn't they put at, a fence there? They didn't put a fence there. And then we had a teacher who made us a deal that we could play in the woods as long as every time, if when he blew the whistle, we always came back within one minute, Mm -hmm. as long as we were all out of the woods within one minute. And that was something that, all right, look, this guy bargained with us. We're fourth graders. This guy Mm -hmm. bargained with us. And, and, you know, we've got this cool deal now. We can go do this. And none of the other kids can. Yeah. It's a little bit. You bought some freedom there. Bought some freedom there. Exactly. But so, you know, I wanted, I followed the rules, but like Mm -hmm. played in the woods from, the whole time I broke. That's a rule I broke because it didn't, it, it didn't it just make doesn't any sense. seem wrong. Yeah. Cause it doesn't seem wrong. Yeah. I, doesn't yeah. Seem wrong. Now I realize that from their point of view, mm-hmm. now as an adult, I look at their point of view. And I'm like, don't go in the Seven year old yeah. children roaming around the woods that any weirdo in kind of a shitty neighborhood could yeah. have been out there laying in wait for us. Yeah. And sometimes there were people out there. So it was actually, yeah. It's not... terrifying up there in Bellingham. Well, yeah. The, Gary Wiles of Bellingham. So I guess what I'm saying is... serial killer capital of the world, if I'm not mistaken, right? Bellingham? Yeah. You might be mistaken. (laughs) (laughs) It's Bellingham. So much to be fearful for. There there have been serial killers in Bellingham. I think plural. Nothing to be proud of. No, no, nothing to be proud of at all. But but this is... So I guess what I've been trying to get to... Mm -hmm. um, 
is did, was there anything like that that you remember? Anything that made an impact on you, or do you just kind of see that as a time that you just got through? I remember this is this guy Todd Okerman. Um, he's now a DJ in Seattle. DJ. Oh, now I'm gonna. I don't remember his DJ name, but um, I remember this one time I was wearing those fat pants that the skater kids wear. You know, the big, huge. You were doing that when you were in grade school. This was junior high, I believe. Okay. No, it might have been like. Well, junior high is a whole other ball game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can tell the story. Was, I regardless. think this was junior. It might have been on that cuspy area. So sure. it's like right when the fat pants first emerged. It was the beginning. And um and he was like, Oh, you fit two of you in there and I was like, Oh for some reason I was like I still remember that that diss. That you were really affected by that. I was diss. affected by this one diss. Yeah. Um and the fat pants thing, I think that was like uh like ninety two to ninety five, so you really you long. really might have been like sixteen when that happened. Uh, see, that's the thing. I don't know what time <laughs> what things happened. At, <laughs> okay, but, well, that's, that's fine. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was. Well, you know what? This, this is going well. Keep going. <laughs> this is going great. Could have been I just had you know on some big fucking pants. You it, know? Is, and it, it, it is. And going. maybe it wasn't fashionable at the point in time. <laughs> it is going well. That's true. It could very well have been. Um, so... Usually what ends up happening for people is they get into, uh, at least that I've talked to you, is, mm-hmm. is the whole idea of that period from grade school till high school, junior high. It's usually a nightmare. It's mm-hmm. not a lot of great stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Although a lot of people hear good music for the first time and start some habits that they take into adulthood there. Yeah. So what was that like for you? That was, I think that was typical. I could say, I could say it with, it, with all certainty that that's when, um, I got my favorite pair of glasses, you know, that I had for a bit then. And, um, it was an interesting time because me and my friends were all, um, uh, when we went into junior high, we were all pretty tall. You were tall? We were tall. So we were all like, you were one of the tall We were 5'10. Yeah. Like I, I was already this height when I was going into junior high. No, that's a big deal. So is it sixth grade, right? Or were you in one of the places no, it was where it's just seventh and eighth? Seventh, eighth, and ninth. Oh. I think. Okay, yeah, that's a little different than ours. Okay. Junior high. Junior high. So you were, so high school was just a sophomore, junior, senior? Yeah. You're a freshman no, at the yeah, end yeah, you're fresh, of. You're sophomore, junior, senior. You're a freshman at the end of junior high. Ninth grade. For a lot of people, this is completely normal. But for me, it's uh, confusing because we didn't have that. Yeah, middle school. You, versus you went oh, to middle school. I went to middle school. I didn't go to junior high. No, you did not. I learned things too on this mm-hmm. podcast. Well, um, that's interesting. So, but you were you were full grown in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. We didn't have beards or anything, but some this one kid did. Every, I think he had a hairy I think back. Everybody and knows like the, a hairy kid yeah, in junior high. The, he looked. Uh, he reminded me of. He reminds me of Hank. Hank McCoy is that it from the Beast? Oh yeah, that's. Oh no, oh, I don't Hank, know what you're talking about. Okay, so some X Men reference. <laughs> Hank McCoy, Beast, and uh, uh yeah, the but he was covered all over in hair, and it was blue. Not the entire time. That oh, was a progressive mutation. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. I think in the originally wasn't he just kind of a weird circus freak dude, with, like big hands. He and, just had big hands, yeah. <laughs> and and they like, called him he Beast. Grab shit with his feet, <laughs> swing around. And then something happened, and he got hairy all of a sudden. Yeah, some kind of. I didn't. I should know. I don't. Did he have any powers? Beast. Did he have powers at all? Ism. I don't even. Yeah. Just like being I just, a beast. <laughs> <laughs> that's not really a power, though. He's really smart. Oh. He's really strong. I think stronger than the average man. Okay. I mean, they they kept him on board mm-hmm. <laughs> for a bit. <laughs> yeah. So. So we, you were we a little were, like Beast. We were. We were. We were tall kids going into the junior high, and I don't know my. My friends were really cool because they did sports and stuff too and, and played with things. Right. You so, kept playing with stuff. Yeah, for a bit. Did you for have a, a did you run into a wall with that? Was there like a time when you had to put away the just things? Just about with, about then. Just on your own. No one said like, "Hey man, no. what are you doing?" Not really. That's Yoda. Put that away. Yeah. No. You brought your Yoda puppet to school. In junior high, yeah, for, for show and tell, they forgot that they didn't oh, have God, show and tell I don't anymore. Think so, do you remember the Yoda puppet that 
Yeah. It and it was plastic and it only its head would move. So sure. it was a puppet, but all you could do is make it look up and look down. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the hand motion <laughs> yeah. of the Yoda puppet. The hand mo- motion is exactly correct. That that yeah. must have been traumatic for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh when did you uh did you listen to music this whole time? Like when did you listen to mu- like hear music that wasn't just your standard radio fare? That was at um my friend Seth D'Ambrosia's house. He uh has you know long driveway skate ramp like little jump ramp and his uh older brother was listening to descendants and probably a bunch of other stuff but But the first thing you remember is descendants yeah do you remember what record i don't i remember what record i got first that was enjoy you got enjoy first yeah that's cool it's got some good songs on it yeah (laughs) it's got a lot of classics on it except for kind of the some of the jokey ones are a bit yeah it's 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 a mix. Those guys got away with the homophobia thing. Um so far. It's so far. You think they still get away with it? Well, I'm just saying like the lyrics in some of the descendant songs are blatantly nightmarishly bad, what bad I hom- say. homophobic though. But that's the thing though is that I think the way we would have thought back then, even like, yeah, you're right. Some of those lyrics are are terrible. But it was less terrible at the time, Mm -hmm. and you record it, so it never changes or evolves. (laughs) And the people, even that made those songs 20, 30 years later, probably look back at it and go, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't have said that. Maybe I shouldn't have said bag like you or whatever. He says, (laughs) that's that's not so great. Oh, God, what are the words? Maybe you don't need them in your podcast. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, it might not be the best thing to... Yeah, I I mean, I love the... uh, I still love him to this day, and I, you know, saw him. We played a festival, like Riot Fest or Fun Fun Fun, one of these festivals that the people have, and they were playing, and it was a really good show. But uh, I think that they've kind of let some of those other more, less, or I'm sorry, less tolerant <laughs> songs, not, they don't really come on stage that much. Right. It's a testament to how good they actually were how good their songs were and how much people I didn't even them, mind the homophobia that people could look look over that yeah. and, and I also <laughs> didn't like it but you know yeah. had a problem with it and they weren't always so great with the chicks either you know no no there's a lot of that that's like kind of you know southern california pop punk kind of yeah situ- situation and i know i have a lot of friends who got through bad breakups or dealt with um dealt with just not being able to deal with a woman in their life um because they were probably you know an idiot teenage boy or whatever but the lyrics on some of those descendant songs were like the thing that they could cling to that was their yeah. life preserver you know so yeah. i i can't look i will look down my nose at it but you know i just it, it I gets think a it's, pass it's where other things don't yeah i think it's interesting <sighs> um back then but that's the first thing you remember hearing and you were skateboarding prior to hearing it um, a little bit, yeah. So when did you get into skateboarding? Um, uh, probably eleven or twelve, like some around that same time. And was it was it just because you knew someone else that did it, or was there did you see a skate video or see people skating, and or was there an event that made it happen for you? I think it was just more like I want to skateboard. You know, I just want to skate. Like I want to bike. That I skateboarded a bunch of times in my life. Nineteen seventies banana boards, mm-hmm. all that stuff. But what we're talking about is skateboarding, mm-hmm. like modern day skateboarding, Tony Hawk, Powell Peralta, skate, like you yeah. said, lo- a long driveway with a jump ramp yeah. or a half pipe or something or, or a quarter pipe or something. Right. Yeah. So that's different because those are expensive boards. Those are, that's pro level equipment you have to get. So there's a, there's a commitment right there just monetarily rather than getting the Nash skateboard for $15, you got to get the 115 or $120 complete vision board or something. Or did you start out with the the cheap I gear? had the Nash. You you start out with a Nash. I had a Nash, yeah. And did uh did you say this isn't going to cut it? I have to step up to I mean it was comp- terrible. Yeah, yeah. Not a very functional skateboard. I couldn't do anything. Did you have friends that had <laughs> that had good boards and you were trying to keep up with them? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, it was it was one of those leapfroggy kind of things where I wanted a, a skateboard, and then people got I I got this one, and you know somebody got something that was had a cooler demon on it or something like that. I don't know. Um, this mine had a dragon on it that was standing on a pile of skulls. The Nash board. Yeah, I think I remember it. it was was like, it standing on the skulls and also holding a skull? I, I think it might have been, but it was kind of a greeny 
neon. It was a neon-y kind of situation. Yeah, that? it was awful. I think it was <laughs> really beautiful. It was, board. it was meant to mimic a, a like a caballero or something. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> so, if hey, if Not you have good, fond though. memories of it, so were you riding that board when you heard the Descendants? I might have had something Lance Mountain ish by then. Oh, that yeah, be... might have had a nice. Then you're you're right in then Lance Mountain. Yeah. Okay. That was my first real deck. Was a where'd you get it? Oh, Bike Factory, I think. Bike Factory. You Bell go down there and you choose all the different components. Yeah, I yeah I did. What, what was your setup? It was like tracker trucks. Um, it was the Lance Mountain. It was a white one with like kind of red and black and gray on it. Okay. You know, the, the cave design. Cave design. The, yeah. Future primitive design. Future primitive. <clears throat> um, then I can't remember the wheels. It must have been some kind of street wheels or ramp wheels. Were you, were you going the soft or the, I was or the going hard? soft. Yeah. I, I, I want, I, my first were 88, whatever, Kryptonics. They were way too, yeah, they might way have, too gummy. Might have been, they, they were pretty gummy, but, but I them, think that they were wrap bones or. Oh, that could be wrap bones. Oh, you know, what, what are the ones that were like, Kind of minimalist. There, there were there were wheels, crossbones, right? They they had just a little. They didn't have a big flat edge on the side. They had like a little. Were those the crossbones? I I never thought of the crossbones as being very minimalist. But the what, what are the minimalist power wheels? I don't know. Well, well, no, wait a minute. And what year was this? This that would have been. I don't know. How old am I? Thirty eight. So were, they, were the boards still shaped, or were you already into all the oh, boards? Oh yeah, of the this was totally shaped. I okay, so this would have been this boards. would have still been a type of skateboard that I knew. So mm-hmm. I don't know what wheels those would have been. I know I I settled on um, I settled on OJ two streets, and mm-hmm. I skated ninety two A OJ two streets. I for years and years that's that's all I've ever wanted. I didn't want to change. Everyone went to hard wheels, and then people would go, "No, you need bigger wheels." And then everyone was all about small wheels, and yeah, just narrow right in the middle, n- narrow wheels. Narrow for the ramp, like really tall. Yeah. Narrow wheels for the ramps. (laughs) And so for me, I'm not terribly coordinated, so I could skate, but I had a real sketchy style. And if I had the harder wheels I had, the more my board would slip out. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of needed the the little bit of gummy traction Mm -hmm. to to be able to to keep my balance. Yeah. So I'd be I'd get on a friend's board and I'd just be on my butt. Yeah. Ramp or street. Yeah, I was really good. So I needed that slipperiness to be able to revert that shit. That's okay. Awesome. And mm. <laughs> that's actually the same kind of stuff people were telling me, uh, you know, 30 years ago. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> one thing that I thought I was definitely skateboarding at the vision or at the, at the fallout thing that you posted pictures up on the oh, Facebook. Okay. Book. So I posted pictures for what I believe was the second annual wake up and smell the pavement pavement. uh uh, skateboarding competition i guess it was a competition and there actually was a part of that day when like it wasn't pros but it was like and like high-end amateurs or something were doing you know street runs and getting judged on it i guess yeah but i remember most of that day as just being chaotic just yeah crowds of people and trying to get getting in line to go off the, the ramp yeah so I, we, I was like much more observational at that point in my skateboarding career. So. so you weren't out in it? I don't think I was out in it. I was like there with my dad. I mean, that was, yeah, I, I mean, did you figure out what year that was? Um, I, no, I think, uh, it, 86. Okay. 86 makes sense because it was, I had a skateboard shop in Bellingham that we opened in 87. Mm-hmm. And I think this was a full year before that. So it was probably the summer before. But I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Eighty six. Eighty six or eighty seven. What would that mean for you? Yeah. You, you're like twelve. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> you think that's right? I think that's right. <laughs> Actually, I think you're not even stating your true age. Then, if you say you're you're like thirty eight now. Well, I'll be thirty nine in like five days. Is that right? I always thought you were a little closer to my age. No, I'm not that old. <laughs> 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 we need a we need the yeah. uh, the monkey the zoo the in members in the background to laugh yeah I can't train them okay that's cool though so skateboarding and punk rock it goes together it mm-hmm. makes sense you hear Descendants yeah I didn't hear Descendants for years after I started all that stuff but if you're aligned to to take that sort of thing in there's just no turning back from that so mm-hmm. there was what music did you listen to prior to that like what if if you liked music prior to the day you heard the descendants or the stuff that the friend's brother was playing what would it have been i don't really even know if i thought about it before then 
you know? You didn't I, listen to the radio I, I, I or make really, tapes or any of that? I don't know. Just probably maybe that's why I liked punk rock is just because it wasn't the annoying music on the radio. Okay. So it's just the first thing that got through to you. Yeah, that's how punk I was back then. <laughs> I didn't like any of this stuff. <laughs> okay. So I'm not, you know, that wore off within a year, the punkness, but you know. Wait, you're saying you were punk rock for one year in junior high? Yeah, when I liked, you know. Then what did you like? Cool after, stuff. Then what did you like after that? Nothing was cool anymore, man. Junior high. Okay. <laughs> um, did you seek out that stuff? Were you trying to get people to record tapes for you with with descendants on it, or were you going out and buying music, or finding a way to order it, or? Yeah, I try to find. I mean, luckily we had some shops that did have, you know, like some decent selection back in the day. Um, there was like Cellophane Square and um, Fallout. Um, there was. Uh, you were able to get into those places when you were that young. I, you know, not necessarily. I, Fallout was hard because it was downtown. Um, but the uh, yeah, like the mall, Cellophane Square, it was right in Bellevue Square. The uh, best way to get music back then was just skate videos and snowboard videos and stuff. So That's true. Yeah. Do you remember like a song you put in a skate video and one song really hit you and you had to go you had to go track down that, that record? Oh yeah, like um tons of stuff. I mean I heard like most of the SST stuff that way. Um with like um Dosta Men and oh what was that band? Odd Man Out. Oh, yeah. Like Steve Caballero's old band, right? I think it was Steve Caballero. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Odd Man Out. Yeah. That was his, uh, I feel like they were kind of cult influence. Yeah, they were, yeah. They were pretty cool. I have the, the record right back there. Do you on really? The shelf. Um, yeah. on, on the vinyl? Yeah, would you like to look at it to get some? Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Okay, hold on, we're hold on, a we're going to look at a thing. Grab my Odd Man Out record. <clears throat> it's uh, it's probably unlistenable now. No, I listened to it recently. It's, it is, but I still loved it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, that's it, dude. That's absolutely. We sold that in my skateboard shop. We had uh, Beware Records. Nice. That we sold. That and Drunk Engines and Skate Master Tate. Yeah. I mean, you find out about stuff like this because you look at the uh, Thrasher magazine. Exactly. I wonder what Christopher Kiss- Sisper's up to these days. <laughs> Which one is he? Uh, the singer guy, it says. Mark Gonzalez played drums and keyboards. Oh, but different Mark Gonzalez. Oh, come on. It's Mark, would, it's, I don't think it's the same one. Why would they do two different Mark Gonzalez's then? That was not In a the skateboarding world. super group. Oh, and then Steve Caballero. <laughs> Very that's a, cool. That's a great record. I like that. Trial by fire. You know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we're going to leave this out and we're going to definitely listen to oh, this so um, when we get done with this we're gonna eat some food and we're gonna listen to odd man out yeah okay yeah that's an interesting label for that too so coolidge by the descendants was in one of those skate videos and it mm-hmm. was just perfect and that's i think maybe where i fell in love with the descendants like i had thought they were cool but remember skate video mm-hmm. but the one oh and speaking of this record label the the best song i ever heard in a skate video was that mcrad song hmm do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh God, weakness. Hmm. I don't know. You don't remember that one? No. It was in. Oh, God, it was in. I don't even remember the video it was Can in you because sing it for all me? I could, no. Come on, please. <laughs> My weakness is I can't say no. My weakness is I can't let go. I that doesn't. Know. No. Check. Sure. Okay. Well, those are pretty bad lyrics. Oh no, it's not good lyrics, but it's a, <laughs> but it's a great song. Sure. It, uh, you, you know, we'll we'll look at that one a little bit later too, and you'll probably remember. And I I can't even remember what company's video it was. We played a. I think it was Santa Cruz, but we played a festival on Halloween, I think, in in Europe, or maybe it was the UK once, and it was with like McRad played the festival. Oh, yeah, and well, he definitely played that song then. Yeah, I think the uh, and they had this. Who was playing drums? It was like it wasn't Ray Barbie. It was like somebody that was like an old, you know, pro skater guy that Mark Gonzalez now plays drums. No. That's not the same Mark Gonzalez. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's move you forward a little bit. I, I think I've got a handle on the, the kind of kid you were mm. and how you got into this. Mm-hmm. Um, d- oh, I got to ask this question because if you were at Wake Up and Smell the Pavement and you were riding those old shaped boards, skateboarding was more punk rock. Mm-hmm. 
did you ever have to run like out skateboarding with some friends and a carload of dudes drove up and like jumped out and chased you or threw stuff at you? Or did you ever have any kind of violent confrontations because of the way you looked or because you were riding a skateboard? No. You just missed out on all the fun, man. Yeah. It's shitty. <laughs> Do you... My bad. <laughs> okay. That's Woodenville for you. Yeah. Touch I them. guess that makes sense. Like yeah. there's, there was, for whatever reason, there was an awful lot of that. In my neck of the woods for a while, and then it died out. By the time all the and all that kicked in, it was mm-hmm. it was kind of kind of gone. Um, all right. So when do you start playing music? I probably got a guitar around the same time. Like Christmas, you got guitar and a skateboard. Yeah, you know, I I had like a like I think that the crappy Nash skateboard was kicking it for a bit before I got serious, and then yeah. around that time it was kind of like skateboarding. Whoa. Uh, punk rock that's really cool sounding stuff not only is it cool sounding it seems like it wouldn't be that hard to do right frankly i could probably do it myself so then i thought guitar and then the guitar kind of came along you know it's all about you know going to my friend seth's house where i first heard the descendants and then his friend had a les paul like his older brother's friend had a les paul and was like jamming on it and i was just like that is the coolest thing that guitar so is that the kind of guitar you got uh no i got a strat a terrible um you get did you squire get, stratocaster so you got a nash like lipstick red yeah nash version of the guitar song. yeah <laughs> and then you outgrew it yeah okay do you still have that guitar no who has it <laughs> who knows it just got traded in somewhere yeah okay piece of junk <laughs> Um, when did you realize that you were, uh, this was something that you were going to be able to do, that you'd be able to do a band and do this in front of people? Um, a couple of years after Minus the Bear started. <laughs> the funny thing about that answer is I believe it. <laughs> but yeah. let's let's look. Yeah, that might be because I feel like I heard you say that before, but. You at some point said, "Let's put a band together," right. and you made a decision to get up in front of a crowd of people and play it. Mm-hmm. So this happened while you were in high school. Yeah, was was Pillow your first band? I mean, there was this kind of band that was mostly Pillow members. I would call it Proto Pillow. Pro- point Proto Pillow. And um, you guys got a demo? No. <laughs> and um, you know, we did a Man in the Box, Alice in Chains cover at at the school talent <laughs> show. Did, but we uh, couldn't did you sing have a, it. Did any who sang it? We had a singer, yeah, t- ready to go, but they couldn't. Uh, they didn't want the lyrics. The school didn't. The school want the didn't lyrics? want the lyrics. Oh, they couldn't. They go. hadn't heard of this little thing called the First Amendment to the Constitution. <laughs> so they wouldn't let the, let it be changed, huh? No, no. And we were like, you know, we'll just not say the shit word. Yeah, shoot. And it was like, leave it out, like they do on the radio, and they were like, but. It's implied. Oh, it's like, okay. Well, all right. So, did you, I mean, we just sucked it up and did it the way that they asked us. We didn't even protest. So you did it. You just did a, a an instrumental version? Yeah. Of Man in the Box? Yeah, pretty fucking boring. <laughs> I I would like to have seen it, though. I'm sure that there's video. Oh. No. Hey, yeah, it's if not, anyone it's, out there listening uh, yeah, has right. a video of Proto Pillow <laughs> doing Man in the Box at the talent show, the Woodenville High talent yeah, show? Woodenville High. What year would that have been? I don't know. 93? 93. It was either that. I mean, who knows? I could be. The dates in my brain are so fucked up and messed up. And just, it could have been the junior high talent show. But I feel like it was in a much nicer auditorium than. Right. Oh, so you were doing Proto Pillow. Uh, in junior high. See, I don't know now. Now that we're talking about it, I don't know when anything started or ended. Well, plus, my version and your version of what junior high and middle school are are well, year I, off anyway. I have a feeling that, um, I mean, that feels like a junior high move, right? To censor Alice in Chains. I mean, that would have kind been of. Pr- Alice in Chains, Man in the Box. What year are we talking? 89? Yeah. 90? 90, 91? Like 90. We, we could look it up, but let's just no. go with our memories. I it's more fun. 90s ish, late, you know. And I think that would have to put it junior high. So in high school, I was in a full fledged full fl- rock band called Pillow. Called Pillow, and yeah. that was the, that was the band you did all through high school. I guess so. And you guys it's recorded that way. a demo. No, a, a, a release. We never released anything. I have a Pillow cassette. No, it's I don't know 
how you could have possibly gotten something. I that bought exist. it from <laughs> your band when you played. In fact, you might have had it in a backpack and handed it to me yourself for money. Oh. At least I charged you, huh? So listen, you're trying to erase the the history. That There's is. no reason to talk about. There is that. reason to talk about that. You came from somewhere, and that's part of where you came from. Right. And that was kind of, you know, it was my pop <clears throat> punk more. I mean, it was like that that um, little bit of art there was more of my, you know, influenced by the pop and punk and the... Uh, you guys were influenced by l- what? A little Green bit Day? of the... Yeah, like, the Green of Day and Lookout the... Lookout Records stuff? But like a lot of the uh, super chunks of the world and that kind of stuff as well. Your okay. Helmet. Wait, there's some helmet in there too. Yeah, dude, everything. <laughs> okay, Nirvana. Sure, that was that was the time. Okay, Bleach though. Just you were into Nirvana, Bleach. You weren't into the later stuff. This was before, um, the later stuff came out, wasn't it? Yeah, that, so, <laughs> that would make sense. That is how it works. But you're saying so as a kid, you were into Bleach, mm-hmm. but you didn't like the later Nirvana. So you were already saying like, ah. Uh, you were already choosing like that, even though you were would have been in high school at that time. Well, I, I did like the later Nirvana. I mean, I you know, I did, but I, yeah. you know, Bleach is a better is a better record than the rest of them. And the, um, I just when I when I was really in like when I was at my Peach Bleak fandom, you know, yeah, when I was at Peach, uh, Peak Bleach. I like Peach Bleak. But... Peach Bleak. That's a good, that'd be like a good rapper name. Peach Bleak? Mm hmm. Have you heard the new Peach Bleak? <laughs> it's pretty sweet, man. It's good stuff. <laughs> I don't know how to um, correctly talk about the new rap. There was only Bleach, you know, there was no Nevermind. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Listen to Nevermind when it never came out yet? It's good. You, you, Tri- d- time traveling, motherfucker. <laughs> That is a good, that is a good point you make. Uh-huh. But so when you were a person who liked Bleach enough that when Nevermind came out, you went, well, it's no Bleach. Of course. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. Cause not a lot of people did that. Yeah. Um, I was like, it's, it's, it's so pretty good. But... Why did Pillow stop? Cause it was stupid. Why did State? It had to just stop. This has a second, this question has a second part. Okay. Why did State Route start? Um, I just wanted to do something with no real ambition or like, um, you know, no pretension as to like whether we could play music or not. And that was, so it. that's, you that know, was the idea of state route five twenty two. Yeah. Basically at the beginning, which we will shorthand to state route. Yeah. Which is what people do. Mm-hmm. And that's what you, you did at the beginning and you, but you guys were, you were good pretty quickly. Well, that was, I mean, John Michael Jerome Farley was the drummer. He's been spoken of on this podcast. I bet. And uh, fondly, I'm sure. Absolutely. And uh, with a plea for him to get in touch. Wow. Yeah. I think he's in the Tri-Cities. Okay. For what it's worth. And um, yeah, it was so he was playing drums. He's a bass player, so he didn't know how to play drums. And then Cindy Baker played the bass, and she didn't know how to play bass, so she just kind of picked it up and started. And... Uh, that was it for a little bit, like just the three of us. And I was kind of, I was listening to that first Link record. These are not fall colors. Oh, and that I makes, was, that, that does kinda, make sense. I was like, this is something like lo-fi, something stripped down where it doesn't need to be like technical or whatever. But there's something else that was also pulling you. It's not, that's not just a Link influenced band. There's some other. What's all the rest of the stuff? Were you listening to hardcore too? Was that super Yeah, in? yeah. What other bands were influencing you along with Link? Because I totally hear that Link influence, and I loved Link back then. But it's it's that's not it alone. I think I mean there's a, a lot of local stuff happening at the time, like um, or Northwest stuff. I would say it's not necessarily Seattle, but uh, like Spark Marker, um, and this band Small. Um, who was around back then, but yeah, but they weren't local. They the Tri Cities, Tri Cities, yeah. But they I'm would come saying over and Northwest, play. and I, I can okay, I can see that. I can see the Spark Marker thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's just a, a bunch of the stuff, Fugazi, and um, kind of the stuff you're supposed to have in your record collection back then. You're building it up. 
Right. You got your uh, Sonic Youth in there sometimes, too. So you got Sonic Youth in, in the early State Route stuff? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, just all of these influences kind of come in. Um, and there's some, you know, some of the hardcore stuff um, was somewhat influential, but obviously, you know... But you found didn't poke its head through sometimes. You found yourself like surrounded by hardcore people though. Mm -hmm. Like that's when we all so state route happens and we all know you now mm -hmm. and you draw X's on your hand. Mm -hmm. What was that all about? How'd that happen? I don't know. I, I mean, it was like, oh well, here's uh, this positive youth culture thing that's going on and it's music centered and um, it was a lot of the people that I'd already began to engage with um so yeah and then it's also that um uh, music scene it kind of is a crossover style music scene that it was at least at that point i don't know how the underground works anymore at all but <laughs> does the, it i don't know is it there still i can't <laughs> i can't nobody invites me to their house shows um but yeah yeah there's a lot i mean you know but so you were drawn to so the x's we're talking about is straight edge and yeah. uh a lot of us were straight edge back then. A lot of people were. Um, but it was still a minority of people in the music scene. And for whatever reason, you kind of went, yeah, those those guys. Mm -hmm. I think that I had a fear of alcoholism and drugs and, you know. And you'd never, you didn't do any of that prior? Oh, I did. But you wanted a reason to stop. Yeah, yeah. That or, puts you, or, you know, it was like, I was, I'm pretty self-aware when it comes to that kind of stuff. I always was, but... um and so when it, when I was, you know, I just saw the opportunity to be involved in something slightly different, you know. Was it a quiet thing that you just kind of like decided for yourself or was it like, was there a day you can remember when you said, nah, today I'm, I'm straight edge now? Did you, do you remember the day you claimed it? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. And I don't at all. Yeah. There was no ceremony. No, I was just like, fuck, I'm straight edge. God damn it. I ended up straight edge just like all the rest <laughs> of these people. <laughs> Cool. And okay, so you guys start playing and pretty quickly you get a fourth member. Mm-hmm. Nate Turpin. So the way I understand this story, and Nate told it, um, you dr uh, dragged some guy out of a sandwich shop and made him play guitar when he didn't know how? Yeah, it was kind of like the MO for the other people in the band. I was like, just get another guy that doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, You wanted that. You absolutely wanted Oh, you got a dog barking out there. Yeah. You absolutely wanted people who... W w was some of it that you did know what you were doing, so you figured you'd be able to mold it exactly how you wanted it? Uh, No, I think it was just about... I wanted to play with like people that I liked hanging out with and, um, and having no <laughs> preconceptions about the op you know, opportunity it was really presenting. You know, like I was just like... This is kind of a fun band. We'll just, we'll do it, you know. It was more important to you to have the people there with you. You're going to yeah. have to see them at practice, see them at shows, be in the van. Mm -hmm. Wow, that dog is going crazy. Probably going to have to take a break for a second to figure out what's happening with this dog. Um, but <laughs> what's up, dog? <laughs> you end up being a four-piece, mm -hmm. and uh, that's state route. So the dog was barking. The dog is not barking anymore. I think it means she's home. I wonder if she's... Yeah. Okay. Oh. Hi. Hi, Michael. I was just. Spider, I how are you? I would see you. Sorry. I was I just. Totally forgot until just now. I was just about to say, will she notice that the door is shut and that your car was outside, or will she come in? And like she does, Michael Ann has entered the room to see an old friend. She just I wanted to resist. see me. How are you? How could I ever resist this man, this charming man? <laughs> <laughs> I've been very charming in this uh, podcast so far. Oh yeah, what have you? What have you covered? What have you talked about? Well, we're just now talking about State Route Five Twenty Two. Best yeah, band we, ever. We did like uh, years zero through sixteen, yeah, or definitely. We've been trying to get the 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 goods on him as a kid, uh, as an East Side kid. Yeah, which you were also. Which mm -hmm. I was also. Yeah, I I have no idea when I first met you. You were just always there. Yeah, <laughs> sheltered lives. And we're almost. It's not perfect. But we're almost to the point in the story where I go to my friend Jake and say to him, I'm interested in this girl. Oh, Do you know this girl? And I know we talked about this in the Maddie, Maddie episode with Matisse. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, so I, I'm talking to Jake and I said, Hey, do you know this girl? I had seen Michael Ann. Michael Ann, uh, if you're only listening to this episode, Michael Ann owns this home that I'm, uh, recording in here. And, uh, we've been together for 19 years. Dave, so, Dave's her man slave. I kind That's of right. am. I yeah. kind of am. I'm good. a kept man. Yeah. And I'm kind of his sugar mama. It's true. It's a good deal. Mm-hmm. Not a bad deal. <laughs> it works out. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I had seen Michael Ann at the old firehouse playing pool with, with some friends of hers. And I was attracted to her laugh. This is the story that I go with. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh-huh. so I was starting to ask around about her. Drake was someone who would know people from the East side. So I said, Hey, do you know this girl, Michael Ann? And he said, actually, do you, do you remember what you said? I said, she's chesty. <laughs> is that what I said? <laughs> and probably I think just you, as deadpan but, as you just but let's, said now. But let's, oh yeah, let's, she's chesty. You yeah. looked at me with, with almost like a slight air of concern. Like, are you aware? <laughs> Did you know this about this person? And like I said, like I was definitely drawn to her laugh, but you know, I could see her. There are only three possible things anyone <laughs> said about me to you when you asked that question. And it was either about my hair, my laugh or my boobs. Come on. What about the hair? <laughs> that is, it, I, look, I have lots of hair. Oh, you do. I and she did have lots of hair. Yeah. At the time mm-hmm. too. That yeah. was another thing. So, um, so that was, uh, I didn't know. I felt that's, like there was a, also, that's like, we were talking about the guy in junior high that was really hairy. <laughs> I'm not hairy like, like that. Probably. Wait, you're connecting. <laughs> trying to earlier connect we were talking dogs. about that. <laughs> yeah. Different kind of hairy. Different. Yeah. Very she's, different. She has. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. She means the hair on her head. Yeah. Um, no back hair. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no beard. She can't. She wasn't able to buy beer in the eighth grade. No. It's a shame. This kid could. Anyway, so you were the you were the first person that I made contact with about, and I, I just always thought that was a that was a funny that was a funny thing. It was pretty much it all you had the to deal say for about you. it. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, well, I, I, but I mean, it didn't. I I felt that there was a slight air of like maybe discouraging. Hmm. <laughs> I doubt so. I it's doubt. like, you don't want to mess with Michael Ann. That, that might have been, actually. <laughs> she is trouble. She is trouble. She's trouble, but, man. Um, but then, like, shortly after that, like, that was that was before I made my play, where I dressed mm-hmm. up as Lloyd Dauber and went to the, uh, the Halloween party to try to woo you with my... At which I was not. With my costume. And you, you didn't go to the party. Um, <laughs> stay, that, hey, that was the night, Jake, that was the night that State Route played where Rocky oh, yeah, stood yeah. in because you had the broken thumb. That's yeah. right. We've already that. answered all and these I questions really, on this podcast. I really should have been there. I really should have, but I wasn't. But hey, yeah. that was an eventful but, you know, night for people. Do you remember yeah. anything about that night? Anything specific? I remember Rocky... Was wearing a dress. It was... <laughs> Wasn't a dress. He was wearing a silver shirt. Silver I didn't know dress. he had it. It was a full dr- It was a dress. It was like a silver. I think it was like rubbery t- texture, like real <laughs> tight. And um, Nate Turpin was Matt Matsuoka. Yes. That's uh, right. I was just well-dressed, I think. Just had a suit on. Although there is a future... Halloween party at, at oh. that that we all attended at somebody I think it was at Tamara's house where he wore the best costume I think I have maybe <laughs> ever seen in my entire life. Was it the Playboy Bunny? No, you were you had oh like the the, the overall like the coverall like guy. The, yeah like like you were some like boner. mechanic with a giant boner. It was the craziest. Yeah. Weirdest. A mechanic with a boner. Yeah, it was over, that was your Halloween. It was that one had of a Tamara dildo and... sticking out of the crotch of the thing. When Tamara and, and Tyler Jensen and all those guys lived over there in the U District, it was It was there. like a last minute, it was what fantastic. do I have in my closet? <laughs> and, and I can remember, he was on the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have in my closet? Uh, these these leftover overalls that aren't mine. Yeah. yeah, they were like work coveralls that someone <laughs> yeah, would wear at like a mechanic shop. And I can remember being on the front porch at the house and you walking up the stairs. And I, I was like, oh, Jake, and I didn't see you. But then you kind of kept coming, and then suddenly you were there right behind me, and I still I was I was hunched over, and I stood up, and there was just a dildo right there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the old Jake. That's what yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I don't know what the concept was. I think it was just like real basic. You get what you get with this costume. Yeah. 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 Lots lots of good Halloween parties in our past, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Or or costume parties or whatever sort of parties. All right. So look, here's the deal with you. We we've got to get we've got to do this podcast, and you've come in here 
Did like, I just totally so, screw it up? No, you didn't screw it up. And like like I've said, we can cut this out if we need to. I mean, we can just go back. We'll just start back talking about Stay Rough 522 again. But um, since you're here. Again, one there... of the best bands ever. I have to say that before I leave you. Mm. Stay Rough oh. was so always my favorite of all the East Side bands. Thank it's the you. It's the only band from back then that is actually still in my rotation. Oh. That's nice. Mm-hmm. That is good. Toy now, cow. I'm not kicking you mm. out. What I'm saying, you said Toy Cow. Mm-hmm. I love that song. Yeah, one yeah. of my favorites. So, what I'm saying is, if you're going to be here, you have to contribute in some way. Are you going? Do you have any questions you want to ask Jake while you have an opportunity? We haven't seen Jake really much. Oh. I don't think we have seen you since you became a father. So that's a long time. Yes, it is. I, I mean, I feel like I kind of know Jackson and June just from the, oh, from Facebook from the Facebook stuff. But yeah. that's true. We are in yeah. pretty constant contact on social media. That yep. and unfortunately, that kind of stands in for real face to face life these which days, is which so, is so mm-hmm. sad. Yeah, on so many levels. We're making a little bit of an effort to change that but lately. See, actually, this is the best part about your podcast for me is that old friends get to come over. I'll get to feed them dinner. Yeah. Get to hang out. It's awesome. I totally love it. And then it actually makes us hang out more. Think about how much we've been hanging out with some of the people we've seen, like Nate. No, oh, it's great. It's but awesome. You Are you going to feed us dinner? Yeah. You're going to make us dinner? Yeah, don't get used to it, though. <laughs> this is something I only do on I'm special get, occasions. I'm, I'm not even, I don't live here, and I'm going to get used to it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because you got to bring the kids over and stuff, yeah. and we'll hang out in the backyard at some point. That sounds Absolutely. good. I really want uh, Jackson in the backyard here at, 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 the, at the castle here. There's uh, <laughs> a little ledge that Jackson would like to jump off of, I'm convinced. He hasn't seen it, but he wants to jump off it. I'll clean up the dog poop before. Oh, yeah, he would love the ledge. Every little kid here loves ledge. And they like the zombie that's hiding in the backyard, too. There's a zombie out there. (laughs) I don't... I don't believe you. <laughs> you can go look at it with a, a flashlight uh, uh, a little bit later. It's not a uh, uh, yeah. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> but so what I'm right. so well, what I'm I will leave you guys well what I'm saying is is if if, Sorry, if, if you if you if you go you're gonna make us dinner. Well, that that sounds like it's some sort of re- of a reward for me leaving that you're going to get out of that. Um, so maybe I will rethink this. No, I think it's I think I, I'm really I don't I wasn't trying to ruin the deal. I think this is really great, but but I should leave you because I I do want a burrito as well. And that's okay, what I'm gonna make you. All right, well, you don't I, even get a choice in what it is. I'm just gonna make uh, you're just burritos. Gonna get burritos. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's uh, their worst things have happened. Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, thank you, dear. Okay, thanks well. for coming in. All nice right. to see you. Nice to see you. So I'll, our, see, you I'll see you at the room. dining our table. Friend, <laughs> dining together. <laughs> yeah. Our friend Derek Lemon has said that he wants to create for me a light up on air <laughs> sign for the door. Well, the the, the question that? that I have is, will you even pay attention to it? Why would I ever look up? <laughs> yeah. In my own home. <laughs> <laughs> see you in a bit. Good point. <clears throat> All right. Well, that was nice. A little visit from Michael Ann. <laughs> when you, are you guys you, gonna get married? You about to? You were about to say chesty? No, I wasn't. <laughs> okay, uh, we're not getting married. Good. There's only a few people in our lives who that's actually worked out for. You, you're one of them. Yeah, so far so good. I mean, you know, day by day, <laughs> day day by day by day. <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's do this. We 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 actually jumped ahead just a tiny little bit when we get to the whole Mike Land thing, and but you, uh, you basically became pretty quickly throughout 1994 you just became integrated into my group of friends and i saw you constantly and then at some point um well you were also you set up a recording studio in the garage of your parents house and i think that really is the thing that solidified like i think we became better friends just even through that process yeah totally because the uh the uh yeah the slow side down thing the slow side down seven inch that we did there you recorded slow, um, you recorded slow side down like eight songs yeah. right um then which ones that was on the brewing comp that had the slow side down song from that session i thought oh where they well, they did eight songs somewhere else. i think they actually you recorded more than eight songs two different know. sessions two different Couple, sessions yeah. with them but you were recording rocky's band you mm-hmm. recorded lying on loot and you do you remember i came over to do something you were doing something over there and you said, I want to play something for you. You played me the lying on loop, but it was just the songs that Rocky did the acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. And I was just blown away. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, I have to put this out. And you're like, well, I was thinking of putting this out. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Cause you were doing, you were doing a record label at that time too. Yeah. I was doing excursion and you were doing 
12 step records. I think so. Or Henry's finest. But it was originally called 12 yeah. step. Yeah. Why was it called 12 step records? I don't know. Was that like a, a Alcoholics Anonymous thing? Uh, it was like, it was like more of, it was font based. I liked the way that the number 12, like literally looked <laughs> Go in there. And I was like, okay. But, uh, no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't really related to the, to that. It just happened to be like, it's you know, just what it is. You know, who gives a shit what a label's called? Right. Right. Well, that's why you just changed <laughs> it too. You changed to Henry's finest, which yeah. was that, was that a reference to your father? Yeah. Very cool. Um, so you were recording stuff out there and then you had Todd Graham in the band in State Route 522 mm-hmm. and you guys went and you played a show in Victoria, BC. Mm-hmm. And while you were up there, do you remember what you told the show promoters? No. Okay. This is crucial. You guys said, we have another band and we are, we're mellower. We're like way, like a quieter band than State Route. Mm-hmm. Um, and they said, do you want to play a show in three weeks? Mm-hmm. And you guys said, sure, we'll be ready. Does this sound familiar? Yeah. And then, so you came yeah. back and said, Hey, we need to, th- <laughs> we need to have a set ready in three weeks. We told them we were a quiet, like college rock band mm-hmm. and we were doing a band. We, did lit. We were called lit at the time. We later had right, to change right. our name to Screwjack, which was, um, at the time, I think our, what was, do you remember what our original theory for how to, how to, how to approach that band was? I'd like to hear your version first. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally, if you got close enough to any other band member to, to assault them, you could, uh, hit them or try to knock them down. Okay. And we did that at first. Yeah. Then we played a few shows that way and then decided everyone else other than me decided that wasn't a good idea anymore. Right. right, <laughs> Because you right. could, because you would have to, a lot of times if you fell down, you wouldn't be able to keep playing. Right. For some reason we cared. Yeah. <laughs> so we, and it was all just kind of drive like Jehu influenced. I mean, I would think that was probably that and just whatever other hardcore we were into. Yeah, totally. Like, um, weird stuff, weird stuff, very short songs, very, very angry mm-hmm. and loud. And like, music like some people would not consider it such yeah it was it was good but part of the joke was you told them you were it was this quiet nice band and Mm -hmm. then we showed up with five songs in victoria and played this screaming and the thing is though i don't think the joke landed because we just played with other bands that were hardcore bands and it wasn't yeah it was a long uh payoff for the punchline too (laughs) like the guy would have to remember what i said um he's like oh Thank God they're going to be mellow. Well, the payoff was that we, we started that band and it yeah. was actually, that was a lot of fun. fun. I had a lot of fun doing that band. And there was a point. So that, that didn't last very long. We played a few shows where, you know, we were like kicking each other and punching each other in the back of the head and stuff. And, uh, someone once told me that, uh, that we scared them. Good. That I liked that. That mm. was a lot of fun. And then we decided that we were going to try to like not not screw it up as much and be mm-hmm. more of a, more of a band. And I think it kind of fell apart at that point. Yeah. We all doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to, to knock something like that apart, yeah. but it was a lot of fun. And you know, but that was a, that was a good experience. Do you remember anything uh, particular about that? No, it was super fun. I mean, you know, playing with, uh, with Jeff and Dan and uh, Todd was just, um, it was totally different. You know, it was a different kind of thing. And uh, it was totally fun. We had a we had a good time. Played a lot of basements. Yeah, I mean that was back when that was in vogue. <laughs> but that was I felt like that was that was kind of the the spirit of things at the time. It was like I have a wacky idea that I just came up with. Will you all commit with me to it completely? Mm-hmm. And it did it, whether it was a record or anything else. That was yeah. the spirit of the day. Yeah, I think that was pretty pretty common that was happening i kind of miss that though yeah yeah everything's very calculated these days well i mean you know there's schedules we're adults yeah things have to happen things (laughs) time taxes things yeah that's a lot of fun so you guys super fun shortly after we started that band you and a bunch of people moved into one of the epic houses in seattle history the aurora family house yeah which was just basically one of those places where you might see a show in the basement 
you might uh your friend's independent film might be being shot on video in the kitchen mm. at, at any afternoon or god knows what will actually be happening or you're recording bands downstairs or yep. there's a you know acoustic show upstairs or 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 lots of other heinous things that are unmentionable that could have happened yes yeah that was uh that was an era i mean that was uh totally uh that was till 99 98 yeah and went on with justin deary lived there after we did he continued living there okay so that house continued on with a life you, past you yeah it had it had a life past me um <laughs> the whole house was kind of uh an interesting kind of flop house like in and out people would come in and out you know live there for a while or couple you know up to a couple of years and then leave and um lots of shows you know at ink and dagger and um what was mark's band the uh dempsey uh, did we i don't know Dem- uh mark Hulk- nine iron spitfire yeah, holcomb well we had nine iron spitfire of course and um shift played in the basement yeah I, I vaguely remember that. That's who you're thinking of. Shift yeah. when after Mark moved away. Yeah. So Mark, okay. That's, yeah. I, yeah. There was a lot of good stuff that happened there. Yeah. So it was always just so terrible. Like you could never hear any vocals. And oh, yeah. if you could, it was just like the, you know, like, oh, yeah. You know, nothing. Uh, was there even terrible. a real PA? I was mean, not. I don't remember. I mean, there was like these speakers that you plugged into a thing. And you turn, <laughs> turned it up and turned all the high end off. Right, right. Oh, Murder City Devils played one of their early shows there, and Matsuoka filmed it for one of his movies. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was also, I know, that was just a, it was a good, it was a good time yeah. at Aurora House. I'm trying to, I know that there are some stories, but I don't know how many we want to tell. One time, me and Stephanie, Stephanie's my wife now. Oh. We, uh, she moved in with me like at the Aurora House. At for, the Aurora House. So she's alumni but this is right at the end yeah yeah harple tom harple lived there at the time and we got locked out but the back uh window was open by the bathroom going into the bathroom so so uh i hoisted her up there through the bathroom window and she knocked this glass cat uh votive candle holder (laughs) into the toilet yeah and we didn't really think anything of it and then um so she went around and unlocked the door and I went in and uh, a few minutes later, Tom comes out of the bathroom and he's like, what the fuck? You know, like he's in his tidy whities like socks on. So this whatever. was late at night? Late at night. Okay. So that's we're why drunk. you weren't waking up. Yeah. We were just drunk. Oh, this and... is post straight edge. You were drunk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. It's straight edge. I was like 22 and I was like, fuck this. And then, <laughs> so we we're drunk and, um, we climbed in the thing, the window, and it knocked half of the toilet bowl off of the toilet when the cat hit it, and we didn't really notice. Oh, it like cracked it? Yeah, yeah. So when he flushed the toilet, it like shot water all over the floor. <laughs> wow. And until that time, I wasn't even sure what happened inside of toilets. Apparently, water goes around and around all <laughs> over the whole thing in there. Right. So you learned It's just a about hollow thing. Or, yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah. That's like a perfect shot. You know what we did? What'd you do? Uh, fiberglass epoxied that fucker back together. Wait, you did that? Yeah. Did you go mix it up and do the work? Mm-hmm. You were just telling me earlier tonight that you put the the cabinets in in your kitchen in your house. Yeah, my wife and I. Your wife, and I, that's I. I like Stephanie that you give credit. And, well, the she's same... much more of the home renovator than me. But your same partner in crime, all the way back from fixing the toilet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's a foundation. She, she was in I mean, it, Sharks Keep Moving. For she, a she was in the band, right? She played yeah, uh, strings. Viola, yeah. Viola. Is she on uh, the first release? Yeah. Desert Strings and Drifters? That's, that's the one. Yep. It's a little better than uh, the Screwjack stuff. It's just probably, a different it's, genre. It's probably, <laughs> is it a different genre? Yeah. Uh, definitely. It's more, I, I probably listen to that more. Personally, cool. Um, right on. Well, that's awesome. So then you guys moved out um, of the Aurora House, and then there was like a sort of a, a splintering. A lot of people went a lot of different directions. People moved away. People um, just got off on their own on their own tracks for a while. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, 
and I'm probably, I'm, this is probably jumping way ahead, but next thing I know, you're in this new band with the guitar player from Botch and some other guys that have come into town. You're in this band called Minus the Bear. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? That was, uh, I, the, this is good because it's like the Aurora House had, um, Kill Sadie came through town and played and played with, uh, Sharks Keep Moving or, yeah, and uh, Tornado Tom and the Twisters, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and uh, so that's how I got to, you know, so that's how I knew those guys. And um, and Aaron, you know, that's how I knew Aaron and uh, knew Dave from recording Botch at the house at Aurora. And um, also recorded him at the old, my parents' old place. And um, all these all these people kind of moved to town. Um, Corey moved to uh, Seattle from Santa Fe and... Uh, you have Matt Bayless, who recorded a bunch of the material you know, from Botch and Sharks Keep Moving and Kill Sadie, actually. So there's just kind of this common, we knew each other. And these were kind of the people we were hanging out with more at the time. And I was a salesman, so that sucked. And we thought... Well, you were a salesman out on the east side yeah, for... Yeah. what? Tell me about that job. Real quick, we'll take a little okay, aside. Yeah. And you worked little with... I worked with Rocky Votolato, who you've spoken with on this I don't think we talked about this podcast. job at all, though. Um, yeah, we we sold tape backup libraries for computer networks back in the like early early two thousands. This was like two thousand two thousand one. Yeah, everyone had a tech job. Yeah, so I was working at a place called TerraBeam. That's right, right up the street from us. Photonic stuff. Yeah, it was uh, free space optics. Yeah, going to shoot the laser of internet. To, that's right? what it was yeah. that's what it was it all uh it was a, i've never had a job like it prior and i've never had any job like it since it was a non-transferable skill set it was great great <laughs> good, good stuff. use of my time yeah me too like with the music <laughs> um <laughs> so, <laughs> so the uh yeah we were working down there off of the willows road down there redmond and it's it you know we just rocky got a job there a little bit after i think i told him about it and we uh we did pretty well you know made good money probably haven't done much better since maybe a little bit but um it was just and were you in turned it? into some what of a joke it was kind of soul crushing and oh it, it yeah. yeah it was a soul crushing era yeah um at that that there was a couple years there that were brutal and i don't know why it seemed yeah. like for everybody but at the end it's of like, it holy fuck really this is what it's like to <laughs> <laughs> To have to a job actually and then, have a, this is the thing, and the think? world's on fire too. Yeah. Like that's nine eleven, all yeah, that stuff. Totally. It's, everything just kind of went shitty. Yeah, yeah, and that was you know at one point in time working at ADIC, uh, I had you know gotten the job when it was like full coverage healthcare, like no payments, nothing, full coverage, um, stocks, benefits, all that kind of stuff. So at one point I was making. Technically, you know, my stock investment in the company was gaining more than I was making a month or something like yeah. that. But that just lasted until it didn't last anymore. And then, <laughs> and then it went, went to hell, you know? Um, and it was just, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. It was still awful. Now, while you were working there, were you in a, a band or had sharks broken up yet? Uh, we were just kind of not serious, you know? Okay. Nate was, uh, I don't know. Well, he with, talks about he you guys went on a great tour. Yeah. And you played up in Bellingham, a great show. And yeah. on the way back from that, he told you guys he had to leave the band. Yeah, that was kind of, he was doing his thing with his wife at that point in time. Right. He was uh, fading away into the uh, abyss of adulthood. He did that for a while. Yeah, we do. This is what we do sometimes as adults. But, uh, yeah, so it's... So was there, it's good to not do that kind of shit anymore, but right. Well, was yeah. there a period of time when you had no band and you were sitting at a desk selling this backup computer crap, and you were just like, "This can't be it." And then minus the bear pops up with an opportunity. Is that how it worked, or is, can we I mean, just are we we going to rewrite never, the history? Sharks like never really stopped until minus the bear started. Okay, so it was still going on. You know, it was like, oh, that's the guy that. That's Jake. He's the guy in the sales department that he, I guess he plays in a band sometimes, you know? Okay. So my, yeah. my attempt at creating a story where 
you had just fallen on the hard times and you were just looking for a reason. Like you just didn't think you were going to, is this what life is going to be? And then oh, it's like the golden ring of minus the bear shows up and it pulls you out of it and you're able to, that's not, well, you know, re- that's not real. That's a complete fiction. You're that just I've making just... things up, man. But yeah, cool. you get like, uh, starting the music thing again, getting back into that made me realize how dull the job was and kind of how awful it was. So, uh, yeah, we all got, um, they started playing first. So it was like Dave and Aaron and Corey and, uh, Matt Bayless were all yeah jamming first. And I heard some of the demos and I was like, that's cool. It was like kind of reminded me of Don Cavallaro, the kind of tappy kind of stuff. And, but like a little bit poppy and some, it was interesting. So I, uh, heard that the original idea was to have Dave and Corey sing. So I was like, why don't you just have me sing instead? Oh, you, you actually proposed that? Yeah. Have me sing instead? Yeah. I was like, I I'll play. At the time, you were like, I don't want to sing. I was like, I'll play guitar in your band and I'll sing because I don't think you, you guys could do it. Is that how you did it? Probably. And, uh, <laughs> hey, little, look, little, little did I know that came, I didn't know how to sing you, either. You came in and said, I'll do you guys a favor. Yeah. I'll play guitar and sing in this band. Yeah. That's two jobs. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah. So, you joined the band, Mm -hmm. and you said, little did I know I didn't know how to sing. Explain that. Well, I thought, you know, I could just, you know, do whatever singy stuff. But I think, you know... That's what you had been doing. To an extent. To an extent. The uh, sharks, I tried to minimize it as much as possible. Yes. Um, But, you know, it's not like my first... Like writing lyrics and singing, it's not like my first love. It's not what I think of when I think of myself as a musician. Did you take some kind of lessons or do some crash course in what, how to do it differently? No. Okay. Eventually I took some lessons just because my throat was getting burnt out on tour and, and whatnot. Some strength training type stuff, but I don't even think about that stuff anymore either. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And did you guys, did you think that this would become like your main focus? I think that when we started out, we had some pretty high hopes because we enjoyed it. You know, um, we thought it was, uh, some interesting music and we thought that, um, I don't know, had something to it. So we didn't know what, uh, and there was nothing else to do. I mean, it was kind of at the point in time when you either, do something or keep selling the shit at the shit job that you Right, you did. had to make yeah. a choice and commit to one. Yeah. Um, luckily you because had these you don't guys really, yeah. Were... Yeah, I mean, you know, luckily I had my wife who, you know, had a decent job to, you know, r- so that we could rely on her income for a little bit while I was kind of jumping off and uh doing it on my own. So, um or doing the record or music business thing, showbiz. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was a stra- it was an interesting start and it, but it was something that I really enjoyed. Um, I mean, something I think we all really enjoyed. So that's why we wanted to do it more. Um, yeah. And then the other bands kind of collapsed at that time and sharks kind of collapsed. Yep. Sharks and, and botch and kill Sadie. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Botch did go on for a little while longer, didn't it? Uh, not too much. When was the last show? 2003? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I think 2003, but they may not have actually been playing a lot before that. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Yeah. So we're we're kind of up. I mean, now I know that then now you, we're basically saying, oh, and then there's another 12 years when you're in the band from that point forward, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, have has that just been basically taking up all your time? Yeah. I mean, we did it. For a little bit with uh, with other jobs and stuff, but we were in in a few years we were able to kind of commit to the band hundred percent and um, give it a go and it's been pretty good. It's been inter- it's like you said, like compressing the twelve years or thirteen years into a little bit of time. It's like uh, it's interesting, but it makes the most sense to compress because it does seem so. Um, it, like it's happened so fast, like that past 12 years. Something that I've noticed in talking to everybody um, is the further back we go, the longer the times between 
these little little dates. It seems like it's this long period of time. So mm-hmm. we put on a show up in Bellingham in in February of 1990, and then a few months later we put on another show at a Grange Hall. And in my mind, it was like two years difference. And going yeah. back and looking at the flyers and looking, this, no, it's like five months. Yeah. And just from the time that I met you and we became friends, and then we were doing Lit and Screwjack, and then you were in the Aurora House and out. That's like five years. But See, it that seems, seems nuts, right? that's crazy, yeah. right? Because you've been doing, then we just talked about like, oh, the 12 years from 2003 to now. That seems like far less time. Like, yeah. what can possibly have happened in that time? I don't have as many stories from that time. Yeah. And I don't know anyone else that does. I mean, you probably yeah. do. We could probably really, really sink into crazy shit you've seen on tour and places you've been with the band. Yeah. Um, Some shit you guys have to hear about, man. Well, I mean, let's we could kick down a little Woo! bit. <laughs> you got some real wild stuff. <laughs> oh man. But it still is it for me it's weird. Like it just seems like this I one mean, time I was on tour with Rocky Volato. Yeah, oh with with Minus the Bear? Yeah. Yeah, and what happened? I don't know. We had a lot of fun. It was nice. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. It was he nice. Had, he had uh, he had Father John Misty playing drums for him at the time. Well, that's pretty killer. Uh, Josh Tillman. So Yeah. Um, where did you guys play all over the place man i don't remember we played uh this was a long long time ago but it was a blast um yeah it's funny i hear rumor Mm -hmm. that you may be playing music at some point like that's not minus the bear i hope so yeah at some point soon you've been kicking around i keep hearing this jake wants to play yeah with some people yeah you turned down my idea, which was like a born again style crazy political band doing one minute songs, and that's fine. I would, if I were you, I would turn it down too. And I don't think I could actually do it anyway. Yeah, but I love the idea. Crazy. Yeah. Well, just we should, you know, we need a. I need an outlet to scream about politics. Okay. It's probably gonna end up just being a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you you're often subject to my uh, my Facebook rants. Mm-hmm. I I yeah I often. Get in a rant with you. Get me. in a rant with you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's been nice. Like, you mm-hmm. know, um, but I, I, I hear that you, is, is there any possibility that we'll hear some sharks keep moving stuff again or? I don't know. I think I want to do something with Nate at some point in time. Um, it's been tough timing wise just because of, uh, my children. Yeah. Who are incredibly greedy <laughs> and need time. <laughs> They're greedy. All of my time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the thing could happen. I'd like to do something, you know, quite a bit different than what I'm doing with Minus the Bear. Just seems like fun. Well, and there's no, I mean, there's no reason I think that Minus the Bear is going to, is going to stop. Not that I can think of. Okay. We'll see. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, it's kind of, you know, things, adulthood, you know, with the, you, you get, we all, you know, kids happen. Um, people have personal issues, um, things change in people's lives. And, you know, now that we're all knocking on 40, it's like, uh, Oh yeah. Just, I'm just knocking on 40. Well, you know, we're still living the life day <laughs> rock band and stuff. I know. I'm... No, it's, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's one of those moments kind of like back when we all, started hanging out like it's one of those kind of now what moments and sure so we'll see what happens well it can't be it 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 can never really be like that again yeah until unless we all like ended up in the same old folks home or something right where you just had endless time yeah that you needed to fill with no responsibilities and no so you know there's there's always that possibility that's possible that is possible yeah i just uh i don't know i mean i i think that Something new musically would be the, would be fun. Would be something that would keep me interested in it. Right on. Yeah. Um. Okay. I know there was some other stuff. Uh, you're responsible for me liking the promise ring. Cool. That's your fault. Sorry about that. Okay. You remember? Do you remember that? That's a day that I uh, that will live on an in infamy in my life. No, I don't remember that. So you guys were super into the promise ring when that first record came out. Mm-hmm. Thirty degrees everywhere. I don't even know if that's the first record. I think. Second, I don't know. Full length, I don't know. Second full. <clears throat> it's and I was never. I, I I saw them live and thought they were good, but I just didn't like listening to it recorded. Mm-hmm. And when nothing feels good came out, I came over to the Aurora House 
and you sat me down in your room. No, that's the second record, right? Yeah. That's the second record. Yeah. You sat me down in your room and you forced me to listen to it until I liked it. Mm-hmm. It didn't take long though, because it was actually a really good record that I, a really I still good, yeah. really love. But that's you. One. That was something that you could not abide. You said, I can't have you not like this. <laughs> this is, it's too important to me that you like this record. That seems crazy to me. But it did happen. Do you remember it happening? No. You don't remember that, that, that room that you used to record in? No, I do. Okay. Yeah, you sat me. I'm I was, not doubting that it happened. I just don't remember. You just it. don't remember it. I have these, these key memories from people. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just seep in over time and they're not real, but I'm telling you, I used to say I hated the promise ring mm-hmm. and I became a promise ring lover. That's a possibility. Based on, on your, yeah, my demands, your demands. Mm-hmm. You also, okay. One more thing I got to throw out because it was mentioned on the podcast before I lay off the hook here. You recorded in that basement. You recorded Rocky Votolato's first solo record mm-hmm. on that ADAT. Mm-hmm. So this was a point of contention between, with Rocky. He, it's not, he does, it's not that he doubts it. He just doesn't really remember it. Mm-hmm. And I think too much time has gone by. Um, but I mentioned it in his podcast and I've had some people contact me about it since because this is apparently people want to know about this. I remember that you told me and that Rocky told me that he recorded 24 songs and that you chose 12 for the record. I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm-mm. There was this whole, he's going to record everything he's got and then we're going to pick the best stuff. Why would this be in my head? There's a lot of stuff in your head. <laughs> so the theory is yeah. that that ADAT tape that he still has in his box of tapes has 12 other songs. What does he say about it? He says he doesn't remember. And he says, I don't know. But here's the thing, though. Years ago, when I brought it up with him, mm-hmm. he still didn't remember, but, but, but thought he remembered a little more about it. Like, and I've been holding on to this since that recording, like since that recording session was done, and I was hearing the the theory about it. And I'm some as someone at some point during that said, "Well, yeah, like Bruce Springsteen, you know, he records like three times as many songs as he actually releases each recording session." So we were doing that philosophy: just put it all down, and then we'll pick the best stuff. So. I hate Bruce Springsteen, so that wouldn't have been me. No, but but Rocky doesn't hate Bruce Springsteen. Of course not, no. So, so um, but in, even still, it could have been insert artist. It was a it was a philosophy of recording, you mm-hmm. know. So the question has come up since Rocky has that that thing that it, is there any way to revisit what's on that tape? Yeah, you just need an ADAT. Is yours still in storage? I don't have them. They're gone. They are. Go- it's a. It's a they. It's a plural thing. Well, for this, for his recording, it was just one tape. Yeah. Okay. So, so if a person were to buy one on eBay, yeah, you could just plug that thing in and play it. If if, if, if said ADAT machine worked, yes. If if said ADAT machine worked, yeah. No, but that's someone would know how to how to make that happen. Yeah. Okay. All right, because now yeah, it, you put a tape. It's like a fucking VCR. You put a tape in it and push play. I mean, you have to hook the insies and outsies up. But that, see, so it's slightly more complicated, right? And well, you need to mix it, yeah, a little bit. But there's only no, two no, no, channels. No, no, that, that's what I'm talking about. But like, is it is it one of those things where if you put it into an ADAP machine that hadn't been calibrated or set exactly the way yours had been when it was recorded, it wouldn't play back? Or is this just a would this is like a universal format? It, it should be able to play. Uh, maybe yeah that's the stuff that always gets me there's always something like that there's always a switch that wasn't well this flipped, thing was just a tab uh, that wasn't pushed over those those eight hey, that's they sh- never should have happened it was working for you though but the whole format you know i mean it's a, it was a necessary step i suppose but it was just a now like what you got a bunch of tapes and you're supposed to find an ADAT somewhere to get oh you you want to put a thing out that you it's recorded when you were 12 and it's hard know. enough with regular <laughs> dat tapes nope. right yeah no i've it's got that happen. i've got so much stuff in my safe on dat that i'd Good like luck. to transfer yeah you could find one you'd have to buy one for 12 dollars or how much they sell a, a dat player an adat for oh an adat yeah, yeah but i'm talking about the, the uh, i was just mentioning the actual dat tapes and those are hard yeah. enough you know mm mm-hmm. So I I'm, I kind of think that at this point the the mystery has to be solved. Solve it, man. I don't think that there was more than the songs we did. You think I mean, we released... did it in like one day. Yeah? yeah. Okay. 
So now you've cast doubt on this 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 lore, this myth that I've been uh, yep. propagating for for. Yeah, you know how memory works, right? No. So you think of something in the past, right? And then you know every time you remember it, you're not remembering that event in the past. You're remembering your previous memory of that event. So who knows when along the time, you know, since. So most of what we've talked about maybe didn't happen. That's the thing. That's why I don't really trust my memory or care to remember dates or, you know. Okay. So I. Remember, mem memory is a very crappy recorder. I will be bummed out mm -hmm. if it turns out those songs don't exist. I'll be thrilled if they don't. Just because you're going to be bummed. <laughs> out of spite. That's fine. I didn't know you wished me such ill. But here's here was my point, though. Mm -hmm. But I will be so much more elated that I was correct, that I had remembered this story right. Like, I'll take that, that gamble. I'm going to have to sort this out. Please do. I think that would be an awesome way to be proven correct. <laughs> Just, yes. Okay. And, th yeah. But there has to be 24 songs. Wait, you're telling me that... that if you I mean, if threw there's an extra arbitrary three number, songs, no, no, I would not say like, oh, I forgot those three songs. What if it's eighteen and you guys had just exaggerated when you told me twenty four? You okay. just doubled the amount as a as a talking point. That's fine. Eighteen's lots. That's still a lot. I that, still don't think eighteen songs happened. I think it was pretty much just the whatever nine, ten we did. I don't know. I don't know how many are on that thing. I thought it was twelve. God, that's a know. lot. But maybe. I, I could even be wrong about that. It's funny when I brought it up with with Rocky, he didn't dispute the twelve number. Hmm. So, but then you know, you know how it is. I had this dream that um that uh, you were going to be able to answer it, and we wouldn't really have to go any further with it. That you'd just be like, "Oh yeah, I, I remember that real well." I told him to do it that way. Oh yeah, I totally yeah. It was going to be <laughs> twelve songs, and I was like, "Do you have twenty four? That does make it sound and then I said, uh, a little bit. I said, well, let's record all of them because I had nothing but time. <laughs> and he was like, really? Great. Okay, cool. And so we recorded 24 songs and then spent hours laboring over which ones would make the actual record. You're making me really doubt. <laughs> <laughs> now you're making me doubt my memory when you put it that way. Well, I'm trying to put it in terms that would make it real for me. So maybe I can start remembering your version. All right. Well, um, what uh, what do you want people to know? If we're going to bring this to an end, what kind of things have you got coming up? Or what uh, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, there's no Bigfoot. Oh, wait a minute. You you waited until now? Yeah, you don't the, want you don't want to be last done. Last word. You don't want it's not last word. There's no This is the last no, section. No you didn't reason. understand. This is the last section of the there's show. No reason to be uh thinking that there's a Bigfoot around. You and I agree on a lot See, of he, things. See, you think you've actually seen it, right? You, this is the memory thing. You saw it when you were a kid? Huh. No, we've never, <laughs> we've never done that uh, story. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this, okay. Look. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if there was Bigfoot? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fun idea. Okay. And some people who have had experiences... Mm-hmm. Um, at some point in their lives, um, would be more inclined to believe that there's something going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I like your and, Michael Medved's of the world, and he, yeah, that's the one thing I think that Michael Medved and I agree <laughs> agree about. Yeah, um, I hope he gets better. I haven't heard, I haven't seen the news, but I know he's out with throat cancer. Did not know that. Yeah, you know, talks for a living, got throat cancer. I don't know. Connection, it's a real bummer. Uh, I gotta tell you, man. So here's the thing that guy. So we just, we're going, I guess we're just going right from, we're just going right from, uh, uh, Bigfoot to Medved. Yeah. Michael sure. Medved's conservative talk show host. And, uh, I've listened to his show for years because it was, uh, I used to like to listen to an awful lot of conservative talk radio and like have arguments with them, like though they couldn't hear me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, ah, you know, Stephanie Miller mm -hmm. talk show host. Yeah. She's the liberal, right? Mm -hmm. So during the last election or just, no, no, right around the time of the government shutdown, mm -hmm. like right, like a week later, Michael Medved called in to the Stephanie Miller show at like 6.30 a.m. Now, Michael Medved's show starts at noon Pacific mm -hmm. time. So he's calling at like 6.30 a.m. and he's on the telephone. So he must have assumed rightly that not a single person other than one 
David Larson is going to be listening to him on the Stephanie Miller show that morning and then also listen to his show in the afternoon or has been listening to his show during during the day. His listeners aren't early morning liberal comedy listeners. Mm -hmm. He was funny, personable, like the old Michael Medved, like when he first started in the 90s talked trash on the Republican Congress, mm -hmm. said they were bad people. I am misquoting, so no lawsuit here. He said they were something that I can translate into. They were basically bad people mm -hmm. for doing that. And Stephanie Miller and her people were like, Michael, you're not even a conservative. You're a liberal. You won't even admit it. You need to come over to our side. You want to so bad. And here's the thing. The way he was laughing and talking with them, I re I I realized yes that's the thing, he does want to go over to that side, but his he knows where his bread is buttered, conservative talk radio. Yeah. So I do feel bad for him that uh, hmm. the thing that makes his money for you know telling lies, um, yeah, uh, is, has crapped out on him. I I do hope he gets better. Yeah, totally. You agree with that? Yeah, he should get better. Cool. And he believes in Bigfoot. Yeah, that's just the weirdest weirdest thing. I don't think he full blown believes in it. I just think he thinks it's plausible. Anything's not anything's plausible. I mean, we have this argument with my bandmates. I do at least. They're they're always like anything's possible. I'm like that's not fucking true. <laughs> um, so now it's a big thing. But yeah, I mean, it's well, po it's possible. We don't know everything that's out there. Okay, we just so know, like we know that it's probably not true that there's a bigfoot. I don't so. know that, but I get frustrated. I the funny thing is so like why this beast. Why Bigfoot? Are we talking about the Bigfoot or are we talking about the the Yeti or like the, you know, Himalayan? We're talking about mythological creatures like a truth-telling Republican. See, I merged. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just <laughs> did it. No, no. So we're, we're I, I don't think there's any difference between Bigfoot and Yeti and whatever else. I think it's all essentially the same, some version of the same thing. Large land ape that survived that didn't have any reason to die when other creatures of that size died out. This is a primate. This is remnant. It's a Gigantopithecus yuri or whatever it's called. I don't know. It's it's a it's it exists. <laughs> but no, here's the well, thing. I just thought I'd call you out on that on your on your weblog here. Is that what it's called? It's, no, it's a podcast. A podcast. Yeah, sorry. Po it's okay. Weblog is a is a written a, I suppose. A written word. That's good. No, and and you reference a story that supposedly I have, but uh I would never tell such a story to strangers. <laughs> you understand? I, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you do in your Here's the spare thing. time. So when I watch, say, something like Finding Bigfoot, mm -hmm. which is a fun show. Um, That's a show? They have multiple episodes of it? They're like, they're not like, shit, didn't find him. They were the top rated show on Animal Planet. And I know someone on the show. <laughs> so yes, they're, they've, it, they've had multiple seasons. It's huge. The kids are... All over the country and Why the world have are excited about shows Bigfoot. on. Uh, well, ratings. the best part the about the show, Michael Medved's a concern. Okay, so Renee on the show, mm -hmm. she is the one of the four uh, uh, hunters, mm -hmm. Bigfoot hunters. That footies we call them. Well, <laughs> I don't know what they call themselves. I can't think of it right now. But um, she's the skeptic, mm -hmm. okay. and the other three are the dyed in the wool believers have had experiences. And so they're constantly trying to convince her about the possibility of these different things. And she's constantly bringing science to bear on it and her experience. It's kind of the fun. only thing you can do. Right. And that's what, that's part of what makes the, the show good. Yeah. And things are constantly disproved on the show mm -hmm. and things turn out. They never, they don't find stuff. And I like all of that. I don't mind the disproving. Mm hmm. The thing but is, you can make a show about disproving anything that you think. I mean, you could, could you just think it up now and go like, I want to do a show about how maybe there's purple chickens. But there, it would be the a lot mythology. better show if there had been a history of the myth of purple chickens. And when, when does it start? It starts today, man. It start today, isn't that what they say in the hardcore biz? I want a commitment from you. Mm -hmm. I want you to put some thought into what you will say when Bigfoot is proven. I'd just be like, whoa. Whoa. All those things I said, even though I've I said changed, them and they made sense. I've changed my it mind. Wasn't the, you changed your mind because of proof, because you yeah. saw it, mm -hmm. right? So 
Um, but because I think so many, I mean, there's just like, how many hoaxes do you people need? But hoaxes, (laughs) this is the thing that bothers me about that is that most serious believing Bigfoot enthusiasts Mm -hmm. that I know have also put real thought into hoaxing because it's part of the They have to have a level of hoaxing to keep the mythology going so people watch their dumb TV show. (laughs) (laughs) But I... I seriously, like, I know a guy. Dude, he's an ape man. I know he's an a ape, ape man. guy who used to put a gorilla suit on mm-hmm. and run across, like, out by Issaquah, like, run across the freeway in the middle of the night so that people would see him. It explains and, like, everything. And that guy is probably the most, like, dyed in the wool, like, absolute Bigfoot believer. Of course. Yeah. So it, it, the two things aren't mutually exclusive. Just because people hoax stuff doesn't mean it's not real. No, I know, I know. Drastic, drastic lack of proof never prevented <laughs> anyone from believing something. <laughs> no, wait. So, um, let's go down a list. Just a there. vacuum of facts and proof. Let's let's go down a list here, though. Uh, okay. Do you believe in ghosts? No, not at all. No way. And you've never seen anything or had any kind of no. experience. Okay. So and so you you actually uh like just dis- I don't believe in magic fake invented kind of stuff you believe in science well I, yeah but ghosts... i believe that science is a good method with which to perceive the and decide things about the uh, reality of the world now there are two types of ghosts essentially there's interactive ghosts that seem to be interacting with you like a poltergeist or saying something to you or getting your attention and letting you know in some way that they're there and then there's people that just seem to view a scene from out of time like something that's playing back so let's pretend that there is no such thing as the interactive ghost that that could be chalked up to people's imagination lies or misunderstanding what they're seeing Mm mm-hmm do you believe that there could be a situation where some kind of magnetic phenomenon was causing a playback of a recorded history that we don't understand how that mechanism works? No. That You can't even take a science, a possibly science-based example. No, I mean, because where would that be connected to? Like where it happened on the Earth or where the Earth was when it was in that place during the time in the galaxy? Like where you mean where would the where would the data that's being yeah where would the data be stored like where maybe there's a maybe in where is maybe in the metal in the bedrock or something oh no no see that's what I'm saying I'm not saying there's a spirit there I'm saying it's literally just a visual playback but where is the evidence that this has ever happened ah people will be like driving and all of a sudden see like a civil war battle like happening in a place where there was a civil war battle. Or oh, how convenient. someone will like walk out and then yeah. there'll be like a whole, there'll be people having tea, but like in like yeah, 19, people love 18th that century shit. clothes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. People love that shit. They're like, I'm so fucking cool that when I die, <laughs> I'm going to, my, my meanness is going to continue on afterward. And then that belief in the afterlife lets me see actual like actually see things that aren't there okay but but you see what i'm proposing is a possible scientific like there is i'm what i'm saying has no spirit it's literally just an image it's like right right you're creating a phenomenon that you're sort of three-dimensional playback of but that would actually have to occur like something like what you're describing would have to occur and need an explanation (laughs) and you're saying it doesn't it just just doesn't occur no no it does not happen no i mean any of that stuff is easily explained by the misinterpretation of your brain and light. And there's a lot of processing going on between sure. the light that you see and sounds that you hear and, and your brain. Is there anything in the world in your life that you believe in that has a less than scientific explanation? No. You are 100%. There's nothing. Not that I've experienced, no, no. I mean, everything, everything is explainable, and everything would be. When people say supernatural, like that means I, I, I don't even believe those things wouldn't be explainable. We just don't have the science to explain it. Well, yeah, but once we explain it, then it's not magic anymore. You right, know, like, right, right. Like, 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 like the lights. radio. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like the flying airplanes. Sure. Um, you know, we went from the Wright brothers to the moon, and Less than 60 years or something like that, right? I can't do math. Um, 
I could be completely wrong, but in a short period of time. But no, I think to the point. I mean, there's no magic. There's no existentialness. There's no. Uh, I mean, existential in terms of you know uh, the idea that there's a world that's not studyable. That there's spirits that only certain people can see. But anytime you try to look at them, you can't see them. Uh-huh. Anything. Anytime anybody makes a claim like this is magic energy, this is blah, 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 this is uh, vital force, this is all just made up nonsense because people think that they have some special energy in them and they can see dead people and they can, it's all the same. But you have a very strong opinion about this. I don't really have an opinion about it other than that it's silly to say that we live in a very material world, you know, and uh, it doesn't do anybody good to make shit up like that. Okay. To believe well, in. People th- seem to do it, though. To pe- it doesn't do any, any, any good to believe in it, though. Okay. There's no benefit other than having ghost hunters on TV and making <laughs> advertising money for people. Didn't you see that one where they, they knocked the flashlight out of his hand? I can do that. I can throw, <laughs> From a, distance? I can throw a fa- flashlight. You can't. <laughs> you can't do any of that shit. It's all fake. It's it's admittedly fake. What is uh? Yeah. What about the what about the um? What about the voices on the tapes? What voices on the tapes? You know the, the, what are they? I can't even think what they call them. The, oh, they record the yeah. voice. They go to like a graveyard, and then the voice is going, "Get out." Have you seen that I'm botch? Dead. I'm dead. There's a video that somebody made for a botch song, um, where it's it's on the YouTube, but mm-hmm. um. It's all subtitled and like they put graphics that kind of explain the subtitling. Oh yeah. And but what happens is you hear the song and it's not what Dave is saying when he's screaming, but you but it when you when they put the words down there for you to look at and they tell you what it's going to be, it literally sounds like he's screaming <laughs> a thousand empty cores and like all these weird <laughs> things like I can't remember. You have to check out the video. But no, yeah. I've seen where they've done that. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it it changes the. Okay. Yeah, it changes how your brain will interpret the thing. They're telling you what it says. Okay. All right. Well, I just think that's interesting. It's I know that priming. It's called priming. So it's all just a technique. Right, and so people yeah. are being hoaxed by snake oil salesmen. Yeah. All the way from the from the lowest level to the highest level. Of course. I'll let you go after this one last one. Mm-hmm. Aliens. Oh, I got a shrug on that one at least. Yeah. Because that's not the same thing, is it? No, it's not the same thing. That's science. But it's just probably impossible. Or it's probable that there are other life forms. I mean, it's kind of insane to not think so. Okay, the, I agree. The, the only question is why not? Why haven't we seen them? That's the strange question, I suppose. Why haven't they been it? Well, I th- maybe that distance is really, really a problem. I think it is. Energy is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Get, getting enough, you know, fuel. But so the idea of a of an existence of a life form somewhere else in the universe, you think is just it, you'd have to absolutely believe that that was that that it, that is a real thing. That's probable mathematically, right? Yeah, mathematically probable. But the idea that there are cloaked ships in the clouds and people doing experimentation and and that you don't you have a lot harder time buying. Oh yeah, that's. Is it still more probable than Bigfoot? No. It's not. They're at the same relative level of probability, I would say. Really? Yeah. Alien abduction and Bigfoot, you think that you can't put one above the other? No. They can't they all the people that believe these two things suffer from the same <laughs> delusion. Cuz they impro- the same part of their brain fires off when they think about it. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll call it the religious part of the brain, or like the religious the, part of the brain. Yeah, the, uh, okay, that part that believes in ghosts. All right. Well, I appreciate. You. Thank you. I didn't know we were going to go down this route at the end, but I, I, it's, it's, it's really fascinating to me, and I've always liked your, uh, your steadfast adherence to, uh, your. It's. I can't even call it opinion because I don't think you think of it as your opinion. I think you just think of it as the way that it is. Uh, yeah, I'm just, and it's not my, I'm not you a just, scientist. You just, just look at it and go, of course, that's the answer. And I'm not a scientist, you know, I'm you. not the dude, I didn't make my iPhone, but it works, you know, they did yeah. it, I believe them. All right, well, Jake, man, thank you so much for coming yeah, in and doing this. thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, mm-hmm. and uh, let's go, uh, 
let's go see if she's rustled us up some uh, some Mexican food. Yeah, let's eat their food. All right, thanks, but eat their food. Well, the Mexicans' food. <laughs> you said it, man. <laughs> thanks a lot, brother. Right. Well, there we have it. Episode 7 of I've Known You Too Long is done. I really enjoyed sitting down and getting a chance to talk to Jake again. It has been such a long time. And really, I mean, it took, I think, till, till all the way to the end of the episode before we really lapsed all the way back into the kind of roles that we have played in each other's lives. Um, so I hope that was uh, enjoyable, especially once we get into the supernatural talk, because... That's that's the kind of uh, that's kind of debate that I really appreciate uh, Jake for. So thank you for listening. Um, as usual, I will implore you to, uh, especially if you've enjoyed this podcast, please go to iTunes and give us one of those five star ratings and maybe leave some words about it. Um, oh, you know, we got to do some corrections. The number one thing we're going to correct the record on is we were talking about botch and when botch ended, and I somehow got it in my head that it was 2003 but botch's final show was 6 15 2002 the dvd of botch's final show is called 6 2 and i i was one of the people filming for that dvd i just i don't know how that would leave my brain but you know these things happen uh so that's the one correction um the other correction is it's not really a correction so much as what you can hear right here in my hand. That's a pillow tape. So I'll be taking a picture of this uh, pillow cassette along with a bunch of other photos that are related to the things that we've talked about tonight. And I will be putting them on the page for Jake's episode on nobodysknows.com, which is the, uh, the network site for this podcast so please do go check that out and thanks for listening we'll be back soon with another episode this podcast is a product of the nobody's knows podcast network executive producers david r larson and k drake streetman music for this episode provided by polymorph from the record artifacts demos and debris 